Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Haley, and today I am going to be giving you guys my August wrap up. Now it is already September 2nd, which is literally insane. I feel like the year has gone by like that. More so, I feel like my summer break, which was very short lived, it was only four weeks because I took summer classes, went, like literally went by in the blink of an eye. So this month I ended up reading 14 books, which is the most I've read in one month so far this year, or maybe ever, <laughs> in a month I'm pretty sure. And part of that is due to the fact that book Tubathon was earlier this month. It crossed over from July into the beginning of August and I read a ton of stuff then. I think I got through six books, which is a lot. Then I, like right as book Tubathon happened, like literally the, it started on a Monday and the Friday before was my last day of classes. So I used basically the entire month to chill and hang out with my son and my family and read. So this 14 books is a product of that. So I don't really do too many stats with my books and such but I'm still gonna tell you guys like the couple stats that I have and that is the fact that I read five three-star books. I read seven four-star books and two five-star books. So overall I pretty much really enjoyed everything I read. I had some stuff that was pretty average but I also had a lot of stuff that I really liked and two things that I was just like blown away by. So let's just jump right in. So the first book I want to talk about is We Were Liars by E. Lockhart. Now a lot of you guys have probably heard about this one if you've been watching booktube or anything like that for a while now. I It sounds like this was really popular like a year or so ago. It's a YA thriller. Um, usually with these it's sort of best to go in not knowing too much but essentially it's about an island where there are a bunch of different houses on the island sort of owned by one family and like the family dynamics and there's all of this like sort of like power struggle and fighting for money. For me I this didn't really click with me as much as I wanted it to. Granted I was trying to move through it pretty quickly because I read it for Booktubeathon. I have a couple tabs. I know they're like lime green so you might not be able to really see them but I've got a couple tabs. Um, I don't know. I just didn't really like what the twist ended up being. I didn't really like that it took me so long to figure out who everybody was, what the story was even really about, and it just seemed sort of like like uncovering the family dynamic and what was even going on was just as much of the mystery itself and I really didn't like that. I just wanted it to be like I mean, and I'm sure that a lot of people did like that and that's why they liked this book. But for me, it was just sort of like confusing and messy and I was just like, okay, like who even is all these people and why am I supposed to care about this? Like they're all a bunch of rich people that are fighting over like more houses and more money and they're not really doing anything to earn that money other than just being born by this guy that has a lot of money and property and I was just sort of like, why would I care about this? And I don't know, it was just, it just wasn't for me. But I could see why it would be for some people. So I ended up giving this one three stars, which is not a bad rating. So moving forward, the second book I read this month is The Princess Saves Herself in this one by Amanda Lovelace. This is a poetry collection. I ended up giving this three stars solely for the fact that I don't usually click with poetry collections. I like seeing little verses here and there, you know what I mean? If I'm like scrolling through Instagram or something like that, but generally they just don't really seem to be for me. I don't know if it's just the ones that I've picked up, like if they just didn't resonate with me, if they just weren't like, I don't know. This one just didn't touch me personally. I didn't feel like it was bad writing. I just felt like the poetry was just a little juvenile for what I was looking for in a poetry collection. Um, that's just, I don't know, that's just me. I know a lot of people really like these. So I hope that like doesn't make it seem like I think someone else's taste in poetry is like juvenile. I guess maybe that's not the word I should use but the point is just that this didn't really resonate with me and where I'm at in my life so I didn't really like it that much. I didn't enjoy it that much and so I gave it three stars. The next book I read is The Mistake by L. Kennedy. It's a college romance series. This is the second book in the off-campus series. I really liked the first one a lot which you'll see in just a couple books and so I picked up the second one right away. I read the first one during Booktubeathon and literally could not put it down and this one just wasn't as good. It just wasn't like, I mean not, I don't know, I just didn't enjoy it as much as I enjoyed the first one. This one follows John Logan and Grace and 
he's a hockey player and she just happens to meet him one day and then they end up hooking up and then they have a falling out and then they get back together. A lot of new adult, especially college new adult, is very formulaic. It is very like, you know that they're gonna get together, have a falling out, then get back together. It was a three star book for me. It definitely wasn't anything special. Moving forward, the second to last three star book I read this month is Caraval by Stephanie Garber. I'm sure most people have heard of this for sure. This follows a girl named Scarlett going in to find her sister, Tessa. Tressa? T Tella. <laughs> Tella, um, who goes in and sort of gets thrown into this game of Caraval, which is sort of like a, like, mystical circus style situation. So, basically, my thoughts on Caraval are that I really liked everything up until the last, like, 20% or so. See, I don't know what happened, but we were having a good time with the atmosphere and like figuring out how the game worked and Scarlett like moving through stuff and you know like her um friendship with what was his name? Julian I'm pretty sure? Anyway so that was a good time. I really liked the atmosphere, I really liked the world, I really liked Scarlett moving through the world. Hated the explanation, hated the random twists. I didn't really understand why they were being thrown in the way they were. I didn't understand, I don't want to spoil anything, but essentially like the reasoning for why things were happening or had happened the way they did didn't make sense to me. It sort of felt like the author was trying to shock, not shock you because it's not like a shocking book, but it seemed like she was trying to add in twists to sort of make the story more compelling when it didn't necessarily need that. It could have had like one strong punch of a twist and that would have been sufficient and then like a resolution and something that would have added into the second book and I don't feel like we got that. I feel like it sort of felt like a jumble of like oh wait but then this happened oh wait but I know that doesn't really make sense so this is the reason why that happened and I was just like but you didn't need to do that in the in the first place though. I mean some parts of the big reveals I liked. It wasn't all of it. I just felt I don't know. It just wasn't what I wanted to happen. It just didn't go in the direction I wanted it to. So because of that, I gave it three stars, which again, as I've said before, isn't a bad rating. It just it just disappointed me because I liked the beginning part so much and because I liked the world so much. So then the last three star book that I ended up reading this month is Wicked Ruin by S.L. Jennings. Now I read this on Kindle and this is essentially a like new adult paranormal romance-ish story about a world where there are angels and demons and we follow our main character Eden who in the very beginning of the series has these like dark callings where she sort of like feels the urge to do bad things kind of like she for example she can like reach into other people's minds and she like convinces this guy that's bullying her to like walk into traffic and that isn't like a spoiler like that happens like right away okay that's like what sort like the catalyst of like what sort of sets things into motion within the first like 10 pages or so so anyway so that's essentially like what it's about and then this guy legion comes in and he's like hey like i know you have these like dark calling things like i want to help you like deal with that by the way i'm a demon but i hunt like worse demons than me essentially and so for some reason I really liked these books I gave the first two I read them last year I gave the first two five out of five stars I've actually reread parts of them since then like multiple times I really liked the first two books but this book at this point I was so tired of the of the main ship I was so tired of the main like love interest that I hated this book. I literally felt like I couldn't like stand to keep reading it. And then we have this, sorry my lighting just like shifted so. But and then we have this like really problematic rape scene. So there's a trigger warning for that in this book. And I was so not okay with this and nothing really happened 
to resolve it. And it was almost like she was like making excuses for him and like why it happened. And I like I understand what the author was trying to do and I understand like the context but I also don't. And I'm really upset about that to the point where I originally gave this two stars and thinking about it again this might actually be a two-star book because I'm still upset about the way that it concluded and I'm still upset about like the fact that nothing ever really was resolved or explained or like dealt with with that and I get that these aren't like these aren't like politically correct books like there's problematic stuff throughout it and I don't even really like to use that word problematic without like a bigger explanation but for the sake of not having spoilers for this I'm just gonna end my thoughts on this book by just saying I just really didn't like this book. It was really more of a two-star read for me and that was really disappointing because I liked the other two so much. Anyway, so now that I spent enough time talking about that, moving forward, the first four-star book I read this month was The Deal by L. Kennedy. So as I said earlier, I really liked this book. I ended up giving it four stars. It is a part of the Off Campus series. It's the first one. I read this for Booktubeathon. This follows... Hannah and Garrett and it's a new adult college romance pretty sure I already said that um it just follows them sort of getting together it was really cute I don't like to really give away like synopsises for new adult romance books because you sort of know that like they're formulaic got the same thing going on just a slightly different premise I liked it it was really cute it was really fun I read it in a day the next book I ended up picking up is The Wicker King by Kay Ancrum. I also read this one for Booktubeathon and this is a book where if you've heard of this book you probably know it like as the story goes on the pages literally like get darker. As the story goes on I ended up really really liking this book. When I first picked it up the first 30 pages or so I felt like it wasn't for me. I was like I wasn't happy with the formula and the way like I don't know just the text it just wasn't working for me at first and then as I continued to read I ended up falling in love with this story. This is essentially about a guy named Jack whose best friend no I'm sorry August whose best friend Jack um, has developed a hallucinatory disorder which as it's sort of described in this book is similar to schizophrenia and it's sort of about um, how codependent August is on Jack and vice versa and the fact that they don't really want to tell anybody or get help for Jack because they're so codependent on each other and they didn't want to risk losing one another and that definitely seems like it would be like a problematic message and something to put out especially to young readers but overall the story is really about how you should never do that and you should never like wait until it could potentially be too late and when you feel like you're in over your head in a situation that you need to reach out and get that help that you and your loved ones deserve to get. So I ended up really really liking the story. I thought it was so cute. I thought like that Jack and August's relationship and friendship was just so beautiful. I just I loved it. I really did. So I would highly recommend The Wicker King to anybody that wants to read it. I know it can be a little difficult to get into but if you stick with it I hope that it is worth it for everybody the way it was for me. The next book I ended up reading is one I'm actually really excited about and I didn't anticipate this being a favorite the way it was but I'm glad that it was because who doesn't love a new favorite but the next one I read this month is To All the Boys I Loved Before by Jenny Han. Obviously this is just blowing up everywhere. Everybody's talking about this because the new Netflix movie just came out. I've watched it three times. I've loved it all three times. I read this book in a day because it was just so cute. Ugh, I just could not get over it. This follows Laura Jean who if you somehow don't know essentially she writes letters to her sort of unrequited crushes to sort of like get over and process the feelings that she's having and then she puts them in a hat box. She can sort of like let go of those feelings and be done with it and then one day that hat box and those letters get sent out to all the guys and so they get these letters about the way she felt however long ago she wrote them and then from there it's just the shenanigans just ensue and I just can't. I could not believe how cute and fun this was. It really took me by surprise. I read this the first day the Booktubeathon ended which was that Monday and I read it in a day and this was originally on my Booktubeathon TBR and I was so annoyed that I didn't just read it for Booktubeathon. 
<laughs> but it's fine I'm glad I read it regardless like literally as I was like 75% of the way done and I was like wow I'm really gonna read this whole book today because I wasn't expecting to do that I instantly placed an Amazon order for the next two because I was like I need to read those like now and true to form I didn't end up picking them up right away but that's fine we got you know all of September the rest of our lives to do so but I just I just love this was this was so much fun I can definitely see why this is on so many favorite lists so after that I was feeling sort of like nothing like romance wise can really top that so I ended up picking up The Last Time I Lied by Riley Sager. I just hold this book. This is one of my book of the month picks from two months ago. Woo. This is the author of Final Girls. I've got some thoughts about this but I still haven't really like taken the time to... I still just haven't really taken the time to like sit down and like process what all I thought about this. So I'm just going to tell you it in bullet points after I tell you the synopsis. So essentially this is about a girl who went to summer camp when she was younger and it, there's four of them in total in the summer camp in like her bunk and the other three girls end up going missing. And she is the last person that saw them. She is the only one that could really like figure out what happened to them. And then as she's older she is an art teacher and the owner of the camp says hey I'm gonna reopen this after 15 years since the camp shut down when the girls went missing I would like you to come back and teach an art class for us. So she goes back and that's essentially what the premise is. So she obviously starts trying to figure out like if there's any clues about what happened to the girls could she find anything out yada yada. She even ends up like staying in the cabin that she stayed at the first time around. Anyway so this story was good. I really liked the atmosphere. I really liked the characters. I really liked like her relationship. What's her name? You guys see how good I am at remembering characters names right? So the main character's name was Emma and the other main character's name is Vivian. She's one of the girls that went missing and I really liked watching Emma's like sort of big little sister you know big sister little sister relationship with Vivian but everything else was sort of like I don't know this is just another one of those instances and thrillers can really be that way they can really be like polarizing where the like the twist or you know what I mean can really like make or break the story for the reader. The twist just wasn't necessarily like what I wanted it to be and that's why I gave it four stars because I loved the atmosphere I really liked the characters but what I was expecting to happen just like wasn't dark enough for me for some reason. I know what you're thinking. Bitch you're crazy. No it just I don't know the just the execution just the I don't know the payoff it just wasn't what I wanted it to be and I was really disappointed by that so I think I'm gonna um try and pick up Final Girls and see if that one resonates with me a little more but this one was really good except the twist just wasn't for me. I hope other people really like it but I don't know four stars which is good I really liked it but just not like really 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 liked it. So then after that the next one I read was The Darker Shady Magic by V.E. Schwab. Ooh, I've had this book on my shelf for a while it usually goes right there where I've got this beautiful copy of Vicious up for now but alas here we are. So essentially if you don't know this story is basically a story about a guy named Kel and the magical world that he lives in where he can move between the parallel London. So in this world there's Grey London, White London, Black London, and Red London. But essentially I read this story and really really liked it. Really really liked it. I can see why it's a favorite. Kind of confused on how it continues on because like they set up a little bit of a thing for there to be more of a story and more books but really everything was resolved in this book. Which I liked. I liked the nice wrap up of it. Really I did. I really liked Kel. I really liked the world. I really liked the twins and how dark they were. And I even really liked Holland. Like there wasn't really much about this book that I didn't like. It just didn't have that like oomph for me. That like five star wow it's one of my favorites like oomph for me. But you know like most books and most series I've heard that the second one gets better because obviously you know writer growth, story growth. So I'm excited to pick those up. I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard about um, Common Spence's A Darker Shade of Read-Alongs. So I know that he's hosting read-alongs for the next two books over the next 
the next subsequent months so you guys should definitely check that out I'll link his channel down below but I plan on picking up the second book this upcoming month and yeah I really liked it four stars okay so we are almost to the end so the next two books that I read were drum roll please three dark crowns and one dark throne both of these got some tabs I have some thoughts about both of them essentially this is a story about a world where they live in a matriarch a matriarchy on an island where there's magic and when the queen gives birth she gives birth to triplets and these triplets are born with like abilities like one of them is a poisoner one of them is a naturalist so she can control like plants and animals and then the last one is an elementalist and she can control things like water fire earth wind etc so the triplets go off to live with their respective like people sort of and then when they become of age they all fight to the death essentially and whichever one is the last one standing and has killed the other two sisters gets to be queen and then we repeat so essentially i've heard that a lot of people didn't like this first book because it was slower and there's a huge cast of characters and that can be hard to follow and then this one I can't really tell you anything about because it's the second book and it would pretty much give away what it's about what happens in the first one so I really liked this first one this was like a four and a half star read for me and this one took me a little bit to get into like almost to the 35 40 percent mark to get into I didn't feel like the big families the big cast of characters was difficult to follow for this one because it made sense I mean we've got three queens we got three separate areas they're living in they all have family they all have stuff to like learn about you know personalities all that that makes sense to me this just seemed sort of like like it was almost like prepping us for stuff that was gonna happen later and then it just all of a sudden like started happening right away and I wasn't sure that I liked like the direction it was going in and then the end definitely threw me off guard like I for sure thought that I knew what the end was gonna be and it definitely wasn't that <laughs> and now I'm just sort of like but what now okay so here are my quick thoughts so my quick thoughts are that i really like jules i really like mirabella i don't really know how i feel about arsenoy i mean i like i like her but not as much as i like mirabella she's just an angel and i really like jules she's like jules and herself is my otp jules and jen camden i hate julian goodbye julian and katarine is just wow Katarine's story I hate it but I love it you know what I mean I just oh I hate it but I love it that's really all I can say so yeah I really liked these um both four star reads for me for sure I am excited excited for two dark rains coming up here um on September 4th so in two days so I don't know I just really thought I knew where these were going and I was very wrong that's really all I can say about that <laughs> but I hope I know I hope I know where it's going I got a ship by herself and I'm shipping it I ended up changing my mind and my if you remember from the very beginning of this video which I've already been filming for quite a while now so I'm gonna have to cut we're gonna have to cut some but if you have made it to the end you might remember that I said that I had two five-star books but I changed my mind I actually have one five star book and my second five star book is moving down to a four star and that is Fallen Rain by S.L. Jennings. I finished off this quartet as I mentioned earlier I wet I wed I read Wicked Ruin earlier this month well like basically right before I read them back to back but anyway so I can't really tell you anything about the synopsis because it'll spoil all of the books. I really liked Fallen Rain it was sort of a it's like a four it's a four star book for me for sure. I'm not happy with the way things turned out after like I said I had um some feelings about the th third book and I don't really feel like they were resolved. I don't really understand like why our main character still like wanted to be with the person she wanted to be with. That was really annoying and since it's sort of like a romance driven story that like matters a lot to the story it was just really annoying. I don't know. If you ever read it, just know that I am Team Lucifer. 
forever. Anyway, so the last book I read this month, I actually finished on the 30th, 31st, the day right before September 30th. I finished on the 30th and this is my only five star book of the month and it was so good. It literally blew me away, which I'm sure a lot of you guys won't be surprised by, but that is War Cross by Marie Lu. So if you've seen like basically any of my other videos, you will know that I am not really like familiar with sci-fi. I like it. I have some sci-fi books, but it's just not something I'm super used to reading. I loved this. It was so good. The atmosphere, the world. I'm an atmosphere hoe for sure. Like the atmosphere has got to be on point or it's not like, I'm like, wow, this is dry. Like, this is bland. This is dry. I hate this. Like, no, this atmosphere, this is on point. Like, the world, the story, the twist at the end. Oh my god. Like, thank god Wild Card comes out this month. Thank god. Because this was so good. This cover, stunning. The story, stunning. Love of the characters. Love the world. Five stars. Like, I couldn't, I literally don't have anything bad to say about this book. This is essentially about a world where they're in the future. They're a lot more technology heavy and based, which might seem hard to believe. First of all, look at my rainbow, my rainbow tabs. So cute. But this is essentially about a world that's sort of run by this game Warcross. Um, it's not like run by, but like most like more people play world war cross throughout the world throughout this world than that don't so essentially our main character is a hacker and she is a bounty hunter and she accidentally hacks herself into the opening games of war cross and then the creator calls her to tokyo and asks her to participate in this year's war cross games so she can sort of um like figure out who's trying to do this inside job against Warcross. And then of course a sinister plot ensues, but it was so good you guys. Like seriously, if you like sci-fi even a little bit, no, not even if you like sci-fi, just like if you like really good stories, pick up Warcross. Like that's really all I can say without like risking myself jumping into spoilers. I just really, really loved this book. Everybody should go read Warcross if you want a fun, really good story. So yeah, those are all four, <laughs> so yeah, those are all of the 14 books I read this month. Woo! I am so happy and excited about all the books I read and that most of them are a part of a series so I can continue on with them because I, like I said, for the most part, really enjoyed everything I read. It was a really awesome reading month for me and I appreciate everybody that watched this video and watched me talk about all those books that I love to read. I actually, now that summer is coming to a close, will very soon be coming up with my top five books that I read this summer in general. So be on the lookout for that. And yeah, that's really all I've got for you guys. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video.